Good morning. Thanks for being here. So this morning we have on with us the most amazing, wonderful, beautiful Antonina Krenzova. Um, she is a friend that I have met through mutual friends, actually. Um, and we have, we've actually worked with each other on some coaching programs and the coaching stuff that we've been doing. So Antonina, do you want to tell people a little bit about you? Sure. And once again, thank you for inviting. It's such a pleasure being here, you know, and I've seen a lot about what you're doing online. Wow. I'm, I was waiting for this minute. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a few words about myself. Um, I'm Belarusian, and right now I am in London, and I've been traveling all over the world for last year doing the research related to art in my other job. Uh, I used to be a manager, leader, and sustainability, uh, sustainable transformation consultant in the IT industry for 12 years. And I still contribute to that area while being the co-author for IT infrastructure library best practices. But as my big passion and as my hobby, I also do the researches and let's say, I don't know, I'm combining business art and coaching to one entity, which actually became a project for me, which is called Apply Art. Yeah, so that's a bit about me, yeah. So oh, I actually, I think this is so cool because, um, so we'll, we're going to talk today um, about emotional intelligence and some of the stuff that art can bring into that space as well and, uh, and, and apply to what's going on today as well. Um, and I think this is so fascinating that you have this, this strong background in IT because um, I think that a lot of the IT people that I know have really, really high EQ. They just don't know it. And so it's like finding that language that will, will give them the, the space to, to nurture that and to kind of grow it is I feel like you've done this so well with the art stuff. I think it's so cool. It's really interesting and funny how people, let's call it in IT, but it's not only IT. Okay. Yeah. So like, who are related to something more rational and you know scientists how they think we're not uh, artistic enough or we don't have this inspiration art is something which we don't belong at and then if you take artists and if you take people who are creators or something they're like oh it this is so rational but being there and there it's all about one you know and projects they're so same it's all about human beings and I love when I when you just show a little piece of the op opposite world to people in other industries, like oh yeah, it looks like us. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I, I love the difference there. I love that. I love that beautiful. So I'm gonna read a little bit from um, from my book, and it's chapter 20 because that's what we're kind of talking about um, for this talk. And the title of chapter 20 is "The Fires Sweeping Across Us All." which might be very relevant today. So it says, there's something going on right now in history, something that I can't quite put my finger on, something around walking through fires collectively and a gift given to all of us. Can you feel it too? Does it feel like dusty wind blowing in your face or the shaking of shoes too long covered with dirt? It's something and it's calling to us. So I feel like we, we have this, like we have this feeling that's going on. We know that this thing is, is going on around us. We feel it there and we're kind of like at a loss for almost like the words to figure out what that is. That's, you know, it's so amazing that it's really so much up to date. It's exactly what's going on with me personally today, you know? this like to be on a really opposite side at the same moment be curious about what's going on and be even happy observing like oh that's the way our planet can be oh that's what can happen and the same moment feel sadness and anxiety about oh but 
is it safe enough? What's going on? Are we all going to survive in general? So, you know, and this, like, I call it for myself a piano of emotions. Mm. Like, you know, here you have this, oh, I'm happy, and then you're like, so, but to play the whole music of what's going on inside the emotional intelligence help us to play the whole range of emotions at the same time. Yeah. Beautiful. You know, talk Talking about art, that, that's what I, I learned not only from art, definitely that's, you know, the coaching as well and just general situations in life. But for me, art brought a huge um, range, how would I say it? Um, it empowered and helped me to make this muscle of emotional intelligence more strong and more manageable because that's where I can practice that and still be in a safe place. Yeah. And, it's so, and it's more safe to say, I hate this picture or, oh, that's just, you know, how did they do that? Or I'm angry and nothing will happen. To say it's something like that to other person or to the situation is really demanding already. Yes, yeah. beautiful. That's so, that's so interesting. So um, I, I'm a person who um, I think all of us do. And I know that I definitely feel emotions really, really, really deeply. I feel them viscerally, like they're very physical for me to all of the emotions. And like basic, almost every word has a physical feeling for me, like trust and perseverance and courage. And they have these physical, physical feelings for me. And I had no idea about any of that for so long because I was raised in Nebraska and in the Midwest and the United States, we do not talk about our emotions. And which is not, I don't actually think that that's a terrible thing. I think that we have other strengths of being like, well, sometimes you just need to move on and keep going no matter how hard you feel like it is or whatever, you know, like the grit and perseverance. I think that those are really good emotions that we teach. We just don't talk about how that might actually feel on the inside of you, which is fine. And I was raised by chemistry professors, so super rational people. Um, and as they've gotten older, they have both really come more to terms with this emotional intelligence and really, really kind of figuring that out for each of them too. And for me, I got more of the understanding around this emotional thing from coaching, from my coach training and from the coach, the people that coached me. And then I remember one day I went to the Museum of Modern Art here in Rome with some really good girlfriends. And it was like, I had entered a whole new world because I didn't like modern art before. I always thought modern art was super dumb. I was like, what are they doing here? And all of a sudden, once I started being like, oh, this is about emotions that are going on inside the artist and how I can feel my emotions even more deeply and also like articulate them more deeply when I'm looking at this thing and see this green thing that's got like three slash marks through it. And like, I know that feeling. I know what that feeling is. What's the name that I would put around that feeling? And isn't that cool that somebody else felt that same feeling too, you know? That's amazing. I, I went absolutely through the same path. You know, I also been on the page when I was like, this all contemporary art, okay, somebody pays millions of dollars to buy this little piece of let's call it painting you know what are they talking about there it's like just a couple of dots and then i mean it's probably not happening just like you know yesterday was one feeling than the other and taking a little bit of this combination of um you know the approach it's actually if talking about uh neuroscience that's really deeply connected to our brain development because emotions, that's where it's coming from. And art just really helps to indicate what's going on inside of a brain. And when our, let, let's say this cortex, the most mature part, the most rational part, it develops only by the age of 25. Okay, sooner or later, but in the meanwhile. And that's when you start working with your coaching um, methods, right? And you grew up. So you were, your brain was mature enough to associate, oh, what I see causes this emotion and I can find it. So it's actually um, 
it, it, it works in this way and it happened to me too. And why many people, including both of us, uh, figure out it a bit later than, for example, sounds. You know, so, uh, since we're little kids, we can hear even classical music. Uh. We don't need the words to, uh, to understand emotions from the music, right? Uh -huh. So it goes like directly to our soul. But for visual, it takes a bit longer because visual nerves, they're a bit less developed. And that's what we can do by practicing and acknowledging that. And that's why when you look to the classical paintings, first for kids, for example, and for many of us, like, um, uh, for example, who was that? Some Rembrandt, for example, right? Yeah. It's something more clear and more understandable. So we sense, we see a kid, so we know we might feel more lovely and tenderness. But then the uh, impressionists came and they don't have already more precise pictures. It's still not contemporary art, which I have no idea. Yeah. But they already just give a hint, like a little bit to classical music. They don't explain directly. Yeah. So our brain is more mature to start sensing. I don't need to see precise flower to sense the flower. And then we go even further because brain in, in humanity in general develops and that's how kids can learn the art you know coming up then we come into abstract and we already know that we don't need to see the precise flower it can be just shed a shadow of flower but now it's enough just to have one single line to cause something to happen in our brain so the more you explore that the more you train your visual nerves and the idea is and I've been so surprised, not surprised, it was the biggest discovery for me for the last few years. The same parts of the brain, they're responsible for absolutely different functions in our life. Like what? Now, for example, let's say metaphors, when we work with metaphor, like when we feel something warm, physically warm, a cup of warm cup, and when we say, I feel so much warm when we're talking to you. Mm -hmm. That's actually the same part of the brain is activated. And if you make the experiment, uh, which was done in the elevator, you know, you're meeting me and we don't know each other. And I'm saying, oh, can you please hold this cup of tea for me? I need to check something in my back. You're saying, yeah, okay. And you hold warm cup in your arms and then you leave the elevator. And then the same experiment, but I ask you to uh, hold a cup with co uh, cold water. And then after scientists, they checked, the people who were holding a warm cup, they had much better uh, memories of, oh, that girl was rather sweet. You know, she was nice. It was nice with her. And those who hold the cold cup, they were saying, I don't know, she was a bit strange. You know, so they felt, that's how it and that's when you're saying, for example, um, this lady, she is as wonderful as Rose. What happens in your head, you first have an uh, image of Rose and smell, and then you kind of put the image of this girl, and that's how you know how sweet is she. Or maybe you had a bad experience with Rose, and you hurt the finger, so you're like, oh, is this girl as sharp as that? And that's where the paintings or sculptures come as well. You know, uh, artists, they show us something like um, clothes, for example, which reminds us something. And we have in the same parts of the brain that connected to some situation in our life. That's how it strikes us. That's amazing. I can actually, we still have a bit of time, right? Yeah, yeah. I can, yeah show uh, two little examples yeah, of well, let me share quickly and if you're on the podcast right now you can join our Facebook group which is called the BSC or the Becoming Superwoman Club uh, and you'll be able to see this video and see what Antonina is sharing okay can you see it now uh huh yeah. I can see the turtle yeah, perfect. So just concentrate on this red turtle, but right in the middle where the black dot is. Look there for count uh, till 15, for example. 
Okay. okay? And then switch your vision to the uh, dot next to the turtle, to the white spot. And tell me if you oh, know. I can see the turtle. Yes, exactly. You see? <laughs> that, that's so called uh, our color phenomena, visual phenomena. So sometimes our uh, brain processes some colors in the way that if we look for a long time, then it brings the illusion of something else. But if you do it, if you see it here, just on the plain painting, you know, just red turtle, just imagine what's going on with you oh instead of green when we see that. And we might not even notice that because our brain automatically do that. But because it's physical, something inside the body still reacts. And if we practice more, that's what uh, happened to you when you start noticing, oh, I see just this square and I feel something's going on inside. So just knowing that no matter if you feel it or not, it is going on inside. That's so fascinating. This is that. And there is one more example. For example, um, you know, if we, I don't know, do you know this painting? Have you seen so that this before? This is one of my favorite paintings. So this is Van Gogh's sunflower painting that she's showing right now. I love this one. It's one of my favorites. Great, and you're smiling now. I mean, you smile a lot right now. But that's one more phenomena that happen in our brain when we recognize something. No matter if we want it or not, we automatically get in the happy hormones. And that's why when you go to the museum and see the paintings that you've seen before online, or you even seen them on real, but for a long time ago, the same as meeting other person, will get the happy hormones mm -hmm. and stress goes down. So it's for stress relief. It's one more function that R does for us. So this recognition thing. And I'm, I'm like so quick, just giving you a hint what's going on. There are a million of other examples. And for example, sorry for clicking, I'll show you last one. Like these shapes, that's also, you know, this uh, Gestalt principles. Our brain tends to um, complete the figure, even if it's not existing. Do you see this white train? Yeah. Existing there. Yeah. Or maybe I don't know. Maybe if it's you know the black on the background and white, but our brain, yeah, wants to do something. You actually triggers you. Or for example, grouping where the C is. A few squares grouped, and we tend to see that they are the same triangulars but they might be not, they're just there. And if you look to this uh, painting and photo of the painting on the left, I, I did have a little experiment in social network and many people reacted to this uh, photo done by a wonderful photographer. And you know why? Because you see the group in here, you know, two people and our brain tends to think, oh, maybe they're a couple, maybe they're not. And then you see the face, which is covered, this co uh, coincident, a happy coincident head right where the eye should be, and it catches the attention. Yeah. The visual images, they impact and tickle in the brain. And if we know how, you know, and if we know that which colors may bring this uh, illusion, which not, and we do consciously visit in museums, we actually practice our emotional intelligence. I love this so much. Okay, so I wanna unpack some of this stuff um, because it's amazing. So um, I think that this, okay, so the first thing that I would, I kinda wanna do a little, you know, rabbit hole down is this idea that we don't have this developed in us until later on in life. And I feel like this is so, as, as a mom, and then as somebody who, who goes out and does leadership development with people, I see with my kids, you know, I say like, I, we parent by the sevens. And so for the first seven years, we, we kind of have this one philosophy. For the second seven years, we have this philosophy. And for the third, we have this philosophy until they're 21 and they, they go out. And so maybe I'll have something around up until 25 and maybe beyond, I don't know. Um, or at least like a relationship thing that we could do with each other. Uh, and one of the things that I know is we don't start developing those higher brain functions until we're 12. 
And so once we, once we get to that sort of space of being 12 years old, we can really start, there's, a, there's like an explosion of possibilities that are there that we couldn't really explore before when we were younger than that. And I think, and, and eight being the age of reason, it's that, that first seven years, it's that same thing of, you know, and I say this to people, when, when we go and talk with kids and, you know, like if a toddler throws some stuff off of their chair, off their high chair, and we look at them and we're like, you know, don't do that. That makes mommy sad. Do not throw your food on the floor. Mommy gets very sad when you throw your food on the floor and you don't want to make mommy sad, do you? Because we love each other and we, and you know, all of that kind of stuff. The kid is literally still focusing on the word floor and is like, what is floor me? Floor. <laughs> what is floor me? So it's like we as parents have to have great emotional intelligence around what's going on in the system because our emotions are actually the things that are going to, our kids are going to, are going to make decisions based upon the emotions that they're feeling in the situation. And so we need to have some kind of awareness around this. And it's the same thing for me with leadership development stuff. When I'm going out and coaching, when I'm talking with people and stuff that if they might not have had the development just like I did of that emotional intelligence, it's okay. So how can we start putting some of the words to these, these things that are going on inside of us, because they're going to be part of the things that really help us to make the conscious choices about what we want to do. And first really important part, as you say, just recognize what's going on inside of me, you know, and be able to separate. Am I, hungry now or am I angry now yes. or am I angry because I'm hungry yes. or will I still stay angry after I eat because I was angry because of something happened to me you know and this practice is really important and it took I mean I'm still I, I'm sure it will never end it's yeah. never ended for, right the older we are the more diverse we become the more detail, details inside you notice but then I do believe it's the same as with the body. It's not enough just to make hundreds or 200 sit-ups when you're 18 and believe that you will have beautiful legs till the end of your life. No, I mean, you have to practice it daily, weekly, and emotional intelligence as well. So you need to recognize. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I love, what one of the things that I really love about what you're saying is that having this um, in our conscious bank so like the 90% of our brain is subconscious and then we've got this 10% that's, that's conscious. When we can bring this up into our consciousness level, then we have, um, instead of these like weird things going on inside of our subconscious that are sort of pushing us around from one thing to another, we start saying, at least this is definitely what happens with me, is when I'm like, wait a second, I'm feeling fear right now. Like this last weekend, I definitely was feeling fear. I couldn't even figure it out. And so I needed to stop and really, really, really pay attention to what's going on inside of me. Oh, when I feel like I want to curl up on my bed and cover myself up and like, you know, the whole time, that's a, a physical feeling that is associated with my emotion of fear. Why am I feeling fear right now? What is this that's going on that's, that's, that's creating this in the system right now? Because then I can make choices about what I want to do such a great gift just to be able to recognize what's going on with me and you know that it doesn't mean that you will immediately stop feeling the fear yeah. or you're like, but you know what's going on so you you can make the choices yeah. and you know sitting in front of the painting while practicing that it's sometimes and not all paintings will cause that for you the same with the people you know it's like for some you react more but that's the purpose uh, to visit the galleries and uh, museums to search for those that triggers you. And I mean, I will not believe that there are people in this earth who will not be triggered by some certain painting. You just need to find the right one. Yeah. And then you notice, oh, so now I feel, it's disgusting looking here. Oh, I feel happy. Oh, and then you just keep noticing and you're learning what does it mean for me to feel fear, as you're saying, you know, what are the triggers and what, what are the factors that I can notice inside of myself? And that's how you practice it more and more and you become more aware. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think one last thing before we, we probably have to go that I really thought was so fascinating about what you said is this idea of the, um, 
of creating these emotions in others almost that that like holding the warm cup can create actual emotions in in other people if we want to and for me that makes me be like i don't want other people to be hijacking my brain and trying to create emotions in me that i don't necessarily want to have and so i think that having this for me having this really strong awareness of the emotions that are going on inside of me makes me start understanding when i see a painting or when i see an advertisement or sometimes when i watch a movie I'll be like, these are the emotions that are being evoked by this image or even this music. Saying that because no matter if we want it or not, we are manipulated consciously or unconsciously by news, people around, art. But when we can recognize, I, I was not angry a second ago, but now I am. What what's changed, you know? So and now, okay, it's not my anger. There's something going on with me. It's about you, right? And that also really cool. I mean, that makes us much more free and actually able to see much more possibilities as well. Yeah. So yeah. amazing, amazing. I love it so much, and I love I love how you bring in this visual art stuff because I think that it is such an incredible power set for us. We're such visual beings. Um, and I think that having that, I love how you connect up this, this coaching and this leadership with the art. I think it's so cool. It's such a really, really cool place to go. I really, really hope more people will notice that. And you know, the purpose of all this project, I don't know where it's leading. I don't know what will be the final product, maybe not, but the more I will inspire people to see more art and more to use it for, for their own well-being, I would just, this will make me extremely happy because I know what a huge difference it made on my life. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So Antonina does actually, she does webinars and workshops online and I am sure that many of the people that are listening are going to want to know more about them and about how to get in touch with you. Um, I highly recommend it. I, I think Antonina is amazing. Um, and I feel very, very fortunate to be able to call you my friend. I'm so fortunate to call you my friend as well. And I, I would be happy to see everyone, you know, in the webinar. Is it, please visit the web page. I usually try to announce there the next coming events. There are not too many of those uh, nowadays, but sooner or later. And then also I am presented in all social networks on LinkedIn and Facebook. Please friend me. And if you have any questions or you're just ready to share any comments and we can discuss, you know, about piece of art or this connection between neuroscience, business, um, and art, because as I said, it's all about one. It's about human beings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so is it, is it applyart.com? Is that your, that website? Okay. And then how, what's the name on the social media? What's your social media handle? Uh, apply art in okay. Facebook. You okay. can also find Antonina Klinsova. Okay. Well and I'll go to. And uh, the main source is applyart.org. Yes. Okay. So check her out. Really honestly, guys, uh, she's got amazing stuff and she has a beautiful heart too. So, so thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. It was so great to be here. <laughs> oh, so much fun. Uh, um, yeah. I'm hoping that we'll be able to do this again because I have so many more questions about the stuff you brought up. So. All right. Lovely. So have a good day, everyone. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.